With the majority of the internal work complete, it's now time to shift our focus to the outside. And the potential is epic, but along with that is a ton of work. When I think about spending evenings up at the farm, I think about calm nights and a glass of champagne around a beautifully cozy warm fire and the kids running around or maybe they're in bed, who knows. Either way, a fire pit area is absolutely essential. And today I'm going to start to put that whimsical dream into the reality. And it starts with creating a fire pit out of an old unused water tank. The fire pit is exactly what I had in mind. Rustic, recycled, bulletproof and surrounded by tree stumps that have fallen on the farm. I really wanted to create a space that just completely fit in with the farm feel and I've absolutely done it here. It's rustic, it's recycled and it's a pile of fun. With the fire pit area now complete, it is time to shift our focus to the exterior of the house. And first things first, we need to replace that dangerous and old back deck. deck is looking just amazing and it's providing beautiful views all the way down the valley. I can't wait to be able to share that with our guests. Now as you would have seen in previous episodes, the exterior of this house, it needs so much TLC. It is in a serious state of disrepair. Needs a clean, needs a prep, and it needs some fresh paint. And this one, I'm gonna be tackling all by myself. And if I'm really honest, I'm not looking forward to it at all. The team from First Building are hard at work installing all the external architraves before I can begin painting. For this, I've gone with very simple square set profiles, using as much of the timber on site as possible as well as matching in with the look and feel of a classic country cottage. when choosing the colors for the exterior of the property that I've always dreamt of a white farmhouse but up here you know there's a lot of dirt and a lot of dust and so I've actually gone with a Taubman's color called snowdrift if you're far enough away it looks beautiful and pale and crisp but up close it's not going to show up as much of the dirts and scuffs and I've actually for the roof color gone with a color pulled from the property. Using the Colorsmith technology from Bristol Hunter region, I was able to select gorgeous river stones, pull the exact color from them, apply the color to the roof of this dwelling and the amazing statement front door. looking amazing but I will be the first to admit that that wasn't easy and to be honest 
at times it wasn't actually fun. But with that family behind me, I get to focus on like all yummy fun stuff on the property. And to start with, I'd like to introduce you to Queen Lexi and Queen G. That's right, we have partnered with Humble Hive Collective, starting with two flow hives and hoping to build from there. Between the bees and the two donkeys, Daisy and Duke, that you'll meet super soon, I can hardly contain my excitement. long road to this point but we're sitting here now and we can officially fist pump because we are done the cottage is finished and it's kind of a big task <sighs> look it's a bit surreal really it is hey um you have flashbacks of oh. uh when we started and and all the termite damage the trees and it's a bit torturous really when you have those flash <laughs> flashbacks well, but um, we've got to the end and it, it's nice. It is nice, hey, it is nice. What's your most of the exterior? Because I actually think that was probably one of the craziest efforts to get the exterior over the line. What's your favourite part? Uh, favourite part? Probably the entry here. I, it, it just feels homely, warm. Mm. It's not... Um, Two out there in your face it just feels like a nice country cottage we've still got the old weather boards with some of the new james hardy just hardy plank boards and we've got the old slab got the old slab and the old seat that we're sitting on um but yeah the outside was a bit of a task especially when we went through all that wet weather as well yeah we had a you know, quite a downpour of we had Wait, the floods. Weather. We had the big floods. Um, so so that, what, that, what would you say is the most challenging then? You love the porch. What was the most challenging part of the outside of the house? Probably the mud around the house. Oh, mud. Oh, the mud. Oh. Um, <laughs> you used to get up onto the deck here and you'd have to like scrape the mud off the deck at the end of the day. So I think you had planned that we could use most of the weatherboards on the outside again and we would just paint over it. Ideally. As we got to the outside and, and then started to say, oh look, these weatherboards here might just go around here if we take those off. Yeah. They were just that little bit out, like half an inch in the old school terms and they just didn't fit. And then taking the windows out and trying to patch around the windows it's really from where hard, the old hey. windows were, that didn't work. Um, and then pulling off some of these boards and noticing uh, more termite damage, putting it yeah. back on, taking the wasp nest or the wasp wall, wall. off. <coughs> that was interesting. The whole wall was covered in wasp nest. So what I'm hearing from you <coughs> is that it was all just a crazy ass challenge. Yeah, but I mean, look where we are now. Well, my favorite part by far is the deck. The deck is beautiful with those mm. beautiful big giant sliding doors that Cotton's Glass did for us. 
opening onto that inside outside sunroom area like that for me is gorgeous because it's been winter while we've been doing it up and the sun beats onto the deck and into that sunroom and that by hands down is my favorite part mm. and i would have to say the most challenging part would be getting the paint to stick when i <laughs> well, it's true right because we were renovating and doing all of this all through the winter season you know i'd get up when i stayed up here before we had bedrooms and beds and i'd get up to paint and i'd have to wait until the house warmed up and then mm. i'd get two coats in or maybe one coat in and then it'd start to get cold and then if the dew was too heavy that night the paint would run off and oh we had a couple of those didn't we yeah remember when dry. we painted the roof and then the next morning we woke up and it was off it was gone yep so i think that was my most challenging part yep what would you change what would i change what would i change probably knock it down and start again the whole house <laughs> No, not really. What would I change? Um, On the outside. There's not too much to change. I mean, it's it's all line and, and with a new coat of paint. It, it, it looks nice. Not even gonna... It looks nice. It does. It, it looks... Even driving along the road coming up here, from what it was, remember that lovely yellowy creamy <laughs> colour? Yeah, with a maroon, I have maroon, maroon in it as roof. well. Wow. So this is over, but it's not over, over. I don't know. Will it be over in our <laughs> lifetime? Maybe not. Can you just like wave a wand or something? <laughs> no. If I had a wand that I actually, you know what? I don't want to wave a wand. It's been an amazing journey here, and I hope everyone that's watched it has enjoyed it. And I hope that you come and stay so you get to meet Hey Hey and the donkeys, which you'll all get to meet soon. And stay tuned because this isn't the only structure on this property. There are multiple structures on this property. And I've got my eye <laughs> on one that's going to be next. Well, there's multiple structures, isn't there? There is multiple. Which one do you want to do? Paper, scissor, rock? Do you want me to go now and find <laughs> Baby Scissors Rock for which? Baby Scissors Rock for who gets to choose what's next. I was going to say for who does it. Go. Paper Scissors Rock. Oh! <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> See you next now. time. We are officially now open for bookings. To book your weekend away, head over to naomifinlay.com forward slash Estate.